So I've made it into the Google buildings here, and I'm here with Alon. Indeed. Hi. And he's going to show me um, data visualizations, um, a tool that you guys can all use, actually. Google Fusion Tables. So we started from the fact that databases are very hard to manage. Okay, where database systems are known to be the hardest thing to manage um, in software. Mm -hmm. And so we want, but on the other hand, we have a lot of people who have a lot of data that is very useful, mm -hmm. and we wanted to make it easy for people to um, manage their data, visualize it, share it with other people, make it, you know, embedded in other blog or their newspapers, and uh, just bring the data to life. Okay, so so what are we going to look at right now? So right now we're looking at one of our um, uh, biggest fans, Simon Rogers from The Guardian of the UK. Um, he's one of our power users. And so he's created a map of um, indices of deprivation. So he's taken a, a large amount of data mm -hmm. and he has put it on a map and he's put information around it. Um, so he's so his article is now bringing the data to life, and in fact, one of the things that has come out from this is that um, when he puts data in his news articles, that often leads to the next article because people ask questions about the data. They provide him new data. They say, "Wow, you were able to bring that data and put it in your article. Here's a whole bunch of other data. Why don't you take this too?" So data is uh, magnetic. It brings more data, more questions, and what we've done essentially is so so. Simon does not have a big IT organization or a database administrator uh, to help him. So what we've done is we've created a tool that makes it very easy for people to upload the data and create these visualizations and take the uh, All right. thing and, and put it in a blog. Okay, All so right. I'm a journalist. Um, how Can you show me how I would use it? Yes, so let's, uh, let's do this now. Um, yeah, so it, it's showing me you know, the first few other file. I need to see that the see this row, row number five. I want to be. I want that to be the sort of the headers of the of the uh, table. Okay, so I'm just adjusting something here, so it's going to ignore all these rows before. I'm going to say next, and now I'm going to say I'm going to give this table a nice name. Um, coffee exports. It's always good to spell right. Coffee exports attribute the data to international coffee organization so we make it very easy and very clear how to attribute the data because that's one of the issues when people share data they want to get credit for it and now I can say you know I can make a bunch of comments here saying this is this shows the data export by country okay I can I can put any other information I want in there now finish Okay, and now I'm going to have the data in um, in my fusion table. Okay, and so the first thing that I can do is I can look at it on, say, an intensity map. Okay, so here's here's the important thing. See this row here? Let's make sure that it's geocoded. Uh, country of Oregon. Okay, this might fail the first time, but we'll see. So what's going on here is that this column here. The system is identifying that it's uh, it's countries. Okay, so it, when I go to the visualize menu, it already tells me uh, you can visualize this on a map or an intensity map. Let's do an intensity map because that's kind of cool, and let's just hope that we actually have. Uh, see, so let's just okay. Let's let's go back to the table and. Let's go to geocode. So we just want to make sure that this is all geocode, country of origin. Okay, so I had to go through one other step here just to make sure that it's translating these names into real locations. And, okay, done, done. Okay, and now let's go to visualize. Let's look at an intensity map. And so now, very quickly, we can see this is obviously a, a mistake that will go and clean the data. And if I want, but notice I didn't do any data cleaning, I just brought it in. And now I can see immediately where coffee is being produced in the world. 
Okay, so the idea that the, it took me, what, three minutes, including two errors, uh, to bring the data and already get some uh, interesting insight uh, from this data. How do you know that's an error? Uh, how do I know that it's an error? Because I don't think Sweden produces any coffee. I've been there several times and it's too cold. So there's probably some country here that is being geocoded to something in Sweden because I didn't, uh, I didn't fix it. In fact, we can look at here and see. Oh, so this is, this is the line of total. I should take that line out. Uh, I should have, um, let's go back to the visualize. Let's look at the table. And there is a line with total. And let's just remove this row. And now we can go back to visualize intensity map. And hopefully, there's no more coffee being grown in Sweden. Okay. Um, that one's probably a mistake there. Uh, actually, no. Vietnam is the oh, second cool. biggest grower of coffee in the world. Yeah, this is that was news to me when I started uh, uh, learning about coffee. Uh, so I can. So the the idea of just looking at data, um, being able to look at data very quickly, is uh, and making it so easy to uh, to share with people. So now I can go and make this table. Um, I can share it with the world. Okay. So for example, here. I can say um, I can share it with a bunch of people, or uh, I can make it such that anybody, uh, people at google.com, okay, so people at google.com, so anybody here can find, or people with a link, or anybody, uh, you know, I can edit the access. Um, if I would do this on my personal account, I would be able to immediately make it visible to the entire world, in which case uh, it would even be indexed by Google and possibly come up in in search results. So um, so the, the, here the issue, the point is you're able to keep your data private, share it with a bunch of colleagues, share, share it within your organization, or make it uh, public to the world, okay? Which is, again, people like to um, work on their data first privately, get a bunch of feedback on it from a bunch of collaborators, and then they may want to uh, share their data. Okay, so I get that you're a big coffee drinker. That's a totally different story. Oh, okay. You're into coffee, and we can find out where um, what countries produce it. Right. So, what's the point of developing this platform? The point of planning is to make uh, it, to make it possible for people to bring their data to life and share it with with people, and therefore get more insights, uh, collect more data. Um, you know, data is something that is usually hidden in silos within organizations, and as a result, it's not being. Uh, shared with the world. So, and the reason was that it was too hard. It was very hard to actually, um, uh, you know, start working with a database system, enter the data. You need somebody who knows about database systems. We wanted to create a system that can be used by somebody who doesn't care about database systems. They only care about their data. And usually the people who care about the data and people who know about data systems are, are very different people. And uh, so that's what we were trying to do. We were trying to make the, the user interface very easy. We were trying to make the visualizations of first-class citizens. So we were thinking from the end result, saying, okay, data is only interesting if you can actually visualize it in some interesting way at the end of the process. So that's why we made the map visualizations. We have a bunch of other visualizations that I didn't show you. Um, we made them first-class citizens. Um, and recently, like, we've been sharing a lot more information just on Twitter and Facebook. Right. So. Um, how do you see this trend continuing? I think we're just at the beginning of this. Um, so, I, you know, um, I think, it, for example, it would be really nice to be able to take to take a, sh a, a Twitter feed, okay? So if you actually had a data set where you can go and just look at a Twitter feed and start analyzing it, that would be great. So you can, you know, if, if, if there are data sets that should be shared by a lot of people, this is a place where they, they can be parked visualized, you can create visualizations, share them with other people, people can comment on these visualizations, and you can start to have an ecosystem of, of uh, um, around data. So I'll give you, let me give you a couple of examples. One is after the Japan earthquake, um, within 24 hours or 48 hours, people had put up maps of road closures and power outages and you know, uh, on, on maps, because that was the, the, the natural way to do that. And we had Millions, okay, millions of people hit on these maps and and use it for uh, for real benefits. So, but the point is, it was really easy to put up those maps. Okay, if, if we didn't have this tool, it would it would be, uh, you know, it's between easy and 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 much harder. It can be the difference between doing and not doing. Okay, and here it was like it was it was trivial. Okay, when the the WikiLeaks data came out, 
um, uh, the guy at the Guardian took the data and put up a map with all the, the incidents in Iraq where people were, were being killed. That map got you know, a, million, I mean, a lot of hits, you know, over, even over a, a weekend. But we've gotten you know, maps of you know, the LA Times, the Washington uh, Post, uh, you know, the Houston Chronicle. All these people are just using, uh, they're, they're putting much more data um, into their stories. Imagine a world in which you know, discussions about real issues were guided by real data. Okay? That's, that's my dream, where if somebody can come and ask, hey, show me the data to back this up. And now, if the data exists, it's, there's no excuse. Not yeah, to you know, um, Chris Anderson and Wired kind of, he wrote something about that, like, um, theory is dead, like, show me the data. Right. So, right. so that's I kind think, of where we are. Exactly. So I think now, if we create the right tools, we can actually make data something that people will want to uh, engage with, okay, and find easily. Um, so as long as you can discover it easily, and, and look at it in the right way, which means somebody who understands the data needs to make it the visualization. We're making that easy to do, but let, so, let the data speak. But like, you know, when you first uploaded it, it had an error. So someone who's not skilled in it could easily like make an error and then put false information out there. Uh, true. The reason that there was an error was that, you know, it was showing me that Sweden's producing a lot of coffee. In fact, more than more coffee than that. So I don't need to know about databases, but since I put this up, I, I knew that this was an anomaly, right? So I went and I, and I looked and figured out. But the point is, I didn't have to be a database expert. I just had to be a, a person with some basic knowledge about coffee to see that, you know, in this case, the geocoding was, was wrong because there was a row in the database that was being, you know, mapped to some village in Sweden. Okay, so journalists can use this to um, share with public yeah. what, what trends are going on. Um, how do you see corporations using this? I believe that the same issue is within, within organizations. I mean, you have data, and um, you know any corporation that I ever worked for, they, you you ask questions, and it's like there are so many databases in this company. Why can't I see the data? So the, think of a of a I think of a corporation as just a, a, a microcosm of, of society. So you know we make it possible for a corporation to you know uh, share the data only within itself, but. There's a lot of data in a corporation, and if people could share it in an effective way, that's that's going to be really good for the corporation itself. Okay, so all these corporations have like tons of data. Um, what? Why do you see the visualization part of it as a key component? Because that people don't love, like to look at rows of data. They like to look at the, the visualization. Tell gives you. Uh, um, it often gives you the answer to the questions you didn't know you wanted to ask. So, for example, if I'm looking at data where, you know, where are people working on, uh, I don't know, some project at, at Google, okay? So I can see if I put this information on a map, the answer is right there. I don't have to go th dredge through a lot of rows of data. But sometimes the visualization gives you, gives you the answer. So I, you know, except for the people who are actually managing the data on a day-to-day -day basis, Everybody else who's interested in data wants to see visualizations. Choosing the right visualizations is a challenge, but if you choose the right visualization, you get, um, you know, you get the yeah. right thing. I, I, I was another. I was actually at a panel recently, and um, a lot of there's a some there's a visualization that should have been like a bar chart, but it was actually a circle, and it like kind of misrepresented the data. So uh -huh. um, like there could be. Like uh, it, it could be it. yeah. You could use it to sway public opinion. Right. Yeah. It's bad. So so yeah. You can you can always use uh, data in 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 bad ways. Let me show you uh, an example if I can find it. Um, uh, this is so they took somebody took the uh, all the earthquake activity since 1973 and plotted it on a map and created a heat map. So what you see in uh, a red means an area that has a lot of uh, earthquake activity, okay? So this is sort of what you expect. But then they took the, the purple points, which is all, all, the, all the nuclear reactors in the world, okay? And they put the nuclear reactors over the earthquake activity map, okay? And you can see that Japan is, you know, it's got red and it's got purple, so this is bad. But this, this visualization, this, this went around virally uh, after uh, after the earthquake, this shows you the issue. This shows you where 
there's you know where there's an issue of uh, nuclear reactors next to uh, um, areas with a lot of earthquakes. So putting the right data together can often give you uh, you know can often make a, a huge change. But granted, I mean you can abuse data is a very strong tool. So you can abuse uh, data as well and, and show whatever you want. That's why it's important, and we 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 made a point out of it is that when you um, when you put up the data. You say who the data is from, so you have some sort of uh, people can can judge your credibility just the way they judge credibility of anything they find on the web, and and you can put in all the assumptions that went into the data as well. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, that data can tell a story, and and it can obviously be abused.